manga is trash, his show is mid, his design is horrendous, and his fan base needs to get off social media and go outside the real issues. The amount of hate that was literally radiating from this anime was so toxic, so dangerous, that I think it's safe to say that I literally became the joke of the anime community. Awful. I don't know how anybody with any kind of dignity and respect for themselves can continue to read and watch Boruto being a Naruto fan and claim. Naruto, at this point it's a household name and arguably one of the, if not the most widely recognised anime. Even if you've never watched anime before, you'd recognise the main cast instantly and there are multiple reasons for the insane amount of popularity the series has. The fact that it was a battle shown and aired on TV stations across the world made it incredibly accessible for kids and people across the globe. It hooked people in with an MC that some may be able to relate to due to his ostracisation and it became an escape for those people. The story the solo Dan has a lot of emotion in it, and there are a lot of touching moments that make you feel attached to the characters. Mystery is also a very big part of the series, and while some things are spoon fed to you, other things are foreshadowed greatly and make you theorise a lot about what could happen next. All of these factors, in combination with a strong and likeable side cast, great OSTs, amazing fight choreography, it's no wonder why it's so acclaimed by a lot of people. Following the end of Naruto Shippuden in November of 2014, fans were relatively satisfied satisfied with the end of the series, but in December 2015, a sequel to Naruto, Boruto, Naruto Next Generations was announced, and in Kishimoto's words, he wanted the sequel to surpass his own work. Kishimoto himself had some involvement in the writing of the story, but it was mostly Ikimoto writing for the first 50 chapters of the series. Fans were of course excited for the series to begin following the success of Naruto Shippuden, and even the first page alone managed to hook a lot of people in, and with the anime airing in April 2017, it became a lot more accessible, meaning a lot more people could enjoy the series. Or so you'd think. If not obvious from the name alone, this series focuses on the story of Boruto Uzumaki, the son of Naruto. Ikimoto chooses to make Boruto start as a talented character rather than an underdog type one. It sets Boruto up to have a completely different and interesting worldview compared to Naruto because of his talent and the era he was born in. One was born in a time of conflict and had to grind and persevere in order to make friends and live a decent life, whereas the other was born into an era of peace and lived in luxury from his inception. But unfortunately, I'm of the believe that Boruto himself is very poor character wise. Before I continue, I do just want to say that there will be quite a lot of comparisons to Naruto and while people may get upset at that, I think it's literally necessary because there's a lot of things that happen in the former series that continue to impact this one and you wouldn't be able to understand it nearly as well compared to if you haven't watched it. Due to the relatively peaceful setting, he doesn't have a tragic or necessarily relatable backstory and I'd imagine writing a good one in this extremely established setting would be difficult. Other things like the MC's general relatability, ability to inspire and depth can make up for this, but I feel like Boruto lacks any of that. And like I said earlier, he starts out as a talented MC, but as the series goes on it does feel like the author's crying the fuck out of his power dial, to a point where he's able to pretty much defeat godlike creatures without much training or forms of sacrifice in order for the power that he has to make sense. He has the Drogon, Karma Seals, multiple chakra natures, invented an S tier juicy by himself in 3 days is the host of a god and has great taijutsu. My issue with this is that he was handed all of this without much investment from himself. While in the original series there were instances of powers being handed to people, but it was never to this extent. And if it was, there was always some form of investment from the character in order for this to happen. I've talked about the MC and now I'll talk about the side cast, or lack of it. For the most part, almost every single side character seems utterly neglected, both in general and in important moments within the series. While this did happened towards the end of the original series due to Naruto and Sasuke being so strong, in earlier parts there was an emphasis on teamwork. A lot of side characters were explored, had a lot of depth, and were integral to arcs like the Chunin exams, Sasuke retrieval arc, and the fourth ninja war. In contrast, side characters in Boruto feel hollow, and it feels like they exist with no real meaning. The only notable exceptions I'd make are Kawaki, Sarada, and Mitsuki, and even then, Sarada and Mitsuki seem to be sidelined in favour of Kawaki. During important fights, the side 
car seem like they're just cheerleaders because of Boruto being so extremely overpowered to a point where even the 5 Kage are reduced to spectators. The villains in this series also have little to no depth. Compared to Naruto that has great villains like Zabuza, Obito, Orochimaru, Danzo, Nagato, Sasori and more who all went through things during their lives that justifies their worldviews and sometimes actions. The ideological views opposed Naruto and they felt interconnected in the series. They were either built up by other characters like Madara or have direct relations with main and supporting characters like Itachi which just adds to the depth of them. In Boruto villains just have the mentality of attaining power for the sake of attaining power and it's interesting to see that most of the antagonists in the series are from the lineage of arguably the worst villain in Naruto. As the series is a continuation, most characters that played major parts in Naruto still remain in Boruto. Of course you need to let the new characters shine, but you can do that without effectively watering down the old cast in terms of power and actual character. You could just write them out of the story entirely or make them unable to fight due to war injuries and expand on the characters themselves. Time and time again we see older characters getting absolutely slammed and an example of this is the 5 car game which I mentioned earlier. It's up to kids to kill what are essentially gods and they somehow succeed where the Kage fail. An example of a character being watered down is Shikamaru. Throughout Naruto we quickly learn that he's easily one of the smartest and methodical people in the entire verse but his brain gets nerfed to a point where he just forgets he has the perfect abilities to get himself out of a dangerous situation when he's shown to do so in the past. Both Naruto and Sasuke are probably the biggest victims of being nerfed though and this has pretty bad implications for the power scaling in the series. And power scaling is a relatively large factor in how tension is built. Let's take Sasuke for example. He has an EMS, a Rinnegan, Amaterasu, Susanoo and is seen struggling against characters he shouldn't have many issues with. They make it a point to show us that Sasuke doesn't have a lot of chakra but looking back through Naruto you can easily see this isn't the case. During the fourth ninja war he was spamming off techniques and was shown that the Rinnegan can literally absorb chakra. We also shown that he's relatively creative with his techniques but in Boruto all he does is spam Chidori and teleport. His Rinnegan being destroyed was also done pretty stupidly and it's just a lazy way of nerfing him. All of this makes me not trust the abilities and powers of characters in the verse. Seeing someone you think is strong get defeated usually makes you tense and think about how the characters will overcome them or not overcome them at all but after seeing all of the bullshit mentioned earlier you know that the villain will get defeated with little to no issue even if the means to defeat them were never apparent. Marion Mode is a good example of this. There's zero foreshadowing for it, it's never been mentioned before, Naruto hasn't trained for it, it was just an extremely specific power for an extremely specific situation. Kurama turns into a science professor and explains nuclear fusion and how it can run down the timer of Ishiki's lifespan. On top of being bullshit, it was just another means of further nerfing Naruto by removing Kurama. While the moment itself was pretty touching because of what they've gone through during all the years, it still left a sour taste in my mouth because of the reasons above. Animation is one of the most important parts of any anime. Same with pacing, too slow and it makes watching the series a chore, too fast and it feels extremely hard to understand what's actually happening. Both of these factors have a large impact on the viewing experience of a series and I feel like this is more of a personal problem. As it's a weekly anime, scheduling is extremely tight and difficult and it's not a budget issue like many people may think. It's understandable for episodes to not be consistent early on because of ironing out issues but seeing stuff like this. relatively recently is interesting and in my eyes that's why I believe Boruto is failing. It just feels like the series is a cash grab forever destined to live in the shadow of its predecessor. Expectations were definitely high for a good reason but unfortunately to me it feels like Boruto came nowhere near to living up to the hype of what people were expecting but obviously that's partly on them. This is a heavily opinionated video and I'm certain people will disagree with the points I made. If so do leave a comment because I'm pretty curious to see what the opinions of people are on this series. Thank you for watching and as always have a nice day.